especially because of our strong base here in the domestic side, uh, which we're also using to leverage and gain momentum on the international front. So um, the the Century Pacific brands are actually already present in 80 countries. Oh. Wow. Um, so with a strong footprint, especially in the Middle East, because there's like a big Filipino population there, but it mm -hmm. has spread uh, beyond uh, ethnic or Filipino. It, you, you have uh, locals and the, uh, the expats patronizing our brands in the Middle East. So it's, it's that strategy of catering to the needs of different uh, segments. And that's why uh, of late, over the last four, four years or so, we also marched into the dairy category to further diversify our, our portfolio. Mm -hmm. We used the, the strength uh, of uh, the businesses uh, that we have in uh, marine, as well as canned seafood and canned meats um, to build inroads into dairy and we've been very successful at it in just a short period of time uh, our market share uh, is already um, uh, above 20 percent about 20 to 22 23 percent uh, market share in powdered milk and um, oh. that we're now the number two brand in powdered milk uh, in in that space of time do you mentioned uh, fish you mentioned meat then uh, milk among those categories uh, which do you think presents the biggest upside uh, for the next at least five five years in terms of there's a big there's a bigger demand in this particular space or more people are shifting to this uh, type of category? So for fish or for tuna, when you put all our brands together, we're already 82% market share. Mm -hmm. So the task there is to grow the category. And there's still some space. Uh, penetration, usage penetration is maybe mid-60s or so. So there's still a lot of space for us to grow the category. In canned meats, we're a little north of 50% in terms of market share with our many brands and many, um, let's say, product formats that, we're, uh, that we have under the meat brands. So there, there's space because parang 50%, parang you can still continue to grow. Uh, but in terms of, you know, consumer habit, yung milk kasi, people drink that every day. I mean, you know, when, when, you're, when you have kids at home or when you're health conscious or when you want to have their, like, uh, to secure or guarantee your daily nutritional requirements, people actually drink milk. So I think there's a lot of space um, and potential in the dairy category. And that's why we've been uh, very aggressive in terms of like our investments and the innovations that we've been putting behind um, uh, the dairy business. So as I mentioned, from nothing to not really nothing, but from hardly anything to 23% market share in a very short period of time, we are actually co-leaders with the with a big multinational in terms of market share in sachets. So uh, that's the entry point of, <laughs> ano, eh, of consumers into milk. Eh. Kailangan dadaan sila sa sachets. Our market share and the market share of the largest multinational in the world in terms of milk is the same here in the Philippines. So we've been able to match their market share in sachets uh, in a short period of time. And we continue to grow. Uh, but more importantly, um, in in an adjacent category in dairy, which is flavored milk, yung choco milk, uh, mm -hmm. we are actually market leader already. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as big as white milk. Uh, there's like flavored and white milk. Uh, but in less than two years' time, uh, we've been able to rest market leadership in, in choco uh, milk powder. Uh, and also under the Birch Tree uh, Fortified uh, uh, brand. So that offers, uh, I guess, presents uh, a big opportunity in terms of growth. Uh, and dairy is like a good category to be in. Um, but we, don't, we haven't stopped in terms of exploring opportunities. Um, as I mentioned, we've expanded our coconut range. So we are uh, OEM manufacturer for Vita Coco globally. But we also came out with our own brand, um, Coco Mama, and has, uh, have been, we've been expanding that uh, brand. 
But the other thing that we went to very recently and very very early days is uh, plant-based uh, uh, meat products. So we recently launched Unmeat, uh, our plant-based offering, and immediately you know like different companies from all over the world started to call us and say, "Oh, we're very interested in your uh, innovation, uh, the Unmeat," because as you know, Beyond and Impossible have been yep. growing the category, uh, and. Uh, we've known of the technology for some time now and we just pretty much just applied it and uh, are working at ways to differentiate ourselves from uh, from these global competitors but we're excited with uh, the early success of our burger our plant-based burger under unmeat and there are other products that will follow uh, uh, soon soon after got it before before I continue with with, the, with what I want to ask, no? on behalf of my wife, thank you for Vita Coco. She's a big, uh, she's a big fan. Lakas niya magstock style ng oh, Vita Coco. Oh, healthy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my question is, my question is for for the plant based meat. Is this something already that Filipinos, as of 2020, it's the, the demand for this there, that that there's a need already that. Uh, a lot of people are shifting into this right. type of alternative because in in Western shores, and yeah, it's 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 a big craze already. Right. Uh, right. Is it is it at a point where the scales will tip and Filipinos will uh, move towards this direction as well? No, e- even globally, um, you'd be surprised that you know the the world is still about. 66, 67, 68 percent omnivores. Yung they, you know, they eat, they eat. Um, they're pretty much, uh, let's say, meat eaters, vegetable eaters, and all of that. So that's like a big percentage, still a big percentage. Uh, and then about 27 percent or so, or 30 percent, are what you would call flexitarian. So. Ito naman, they're they're not shifting entirely to plant based, but they they mix it up between. So they're conscious about their health, so they know they have to reduce their consumption of uh, meat. Um, so they eat both, uh, but they continue to eat meat because they enjoy it. They're not like hardcore. And then the vegans and vegetarians is uh, something like about combined maybe six, seven percent of the, let's say the Western, um, let's say uh, population. So it's still significant. Six, seven percent is big. Uh, and growing, uh, but most of the growth and consumption actually comes from the flexitarian side. So I don't think there's going to be like a big shift, but people are going to consume more of it because of health concerns, mostly. And of course, those who are concerned about environment, uh, sustainability of the environment, um, uh, and the like. Here in the Philippines, uh, we were surprised that there's like uh, a big uh, interest also among flexitarians parang okay okay I'm plant based because on some days I can have my burger my meat and all of that but I also want to you know be, be able to uh, eat healthier a bit healthier by way of uh, plant based food and when I do wala ako mahanap na brand or producto na reliable and, and that's the space that Unmeat uh, I think uh, wants to be able to uh, to occupy so we're ready because we have the technology, we have the manufacturing capability. I think it will grow, uh, but it won't be like yung hardcore na vegan vegetarian type. It's going to be uh, there's going to obviously there's going to be that niche that's going to want that product, but uh, and we'll be able to serve it. Uh, but the bigger opportunity is, of course, we'll serve the requirements of vegans. But uh, among those who want to be able to just eat healthy. Uh, let's say uh, periodically, for example, or a good mix or balance of uh, their diet, then the brand is also there as well. While, while you were talking about uh, earnings and growth and sustaining sustaining that growth, I just I just got reminded of something that um, last year in the midst of the pandemic, uh, you guys doubled your dividends. I, I think you were giving around eighteen centavos. Uh, on a yearly basis, then suddenly uh, you you increased it. Pa, while everyone was slashing or totally removing it, uh, you increased it. I, I just want to know uh, what 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 was the logic behind that, and uh, how do you see also your dividends as well? So it's really hinged on the performance of the company and uh, being able to sustain that, uh, keep everyone, let's say. Uh, 
motivated mm-hmm. and yeah so that that same thinking is going to uh, continue to guide us uh, into the future in terms of where we think the dividends are, are, are going to go at it because that was so that was so interesting uh, at that point because a lot of people were anxious about their dividends then when you declared uh, you increased your dividends it was like a, a breath of fresh air especially for a lot of dividend investors that right, right. Uh, use the stock market as some sort of cash flow for them they're not really in it for the capital appreciation if it goes up bonus but they're in it for the cash flow that the dividends would uh, provide um, right. just just to we're about to round uh round up this podcast but I would normally ask this to everyone that we would interview uh, what do you think is the biggest durable competitive advantage that uh, Century as a whole uh, would have that would make it very very strong no no matter what competition is there or no matter how trends would change or no matter what the economic situation is I think what we've the foundation that we've the, the foundation on which we built this business is really let's say a, a, having a strong portfolio so we have good and growing share positions in the domestic market uh, across multiple demographics and even psychographic segments so you have uh, from the low income consumer all the way to the uh, premium consumer. So we're able to serve their needs and requirements by way of brands, products, and uh, offerings. So that that is a competitive advantage, uh, especially because of our strong base here in the domestic side, uh, which we're also using to leverage and gain momentum on the international front. So um, the, the Century Pacific brands are actually already present in 80 countries. Oh. Um, so with a strong footprint, especially in the Middle East, because there's like a big Filipino population there, but it has <laughs> spread uh, beyond uh, ethnic or Filipino. It, you, you have uh, locals and the uh, multi-expats patronizing our brands in the Middle East. And, um, we have, I guess, a number three uh, brand for Century and a very strong demand for other brands like 555 in Argentina. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see uh, growing interest in, in Coco Mama, for example. Uh, we have a growing presence in North America. And um, of late, we've been growing Asia Pacific uh, aggressively. Uh, both by way of by design and by through serendipity when we we find that when we put the product work with distributors get the product uh, listed and distributed and dis, uh, displayed that it has it, it picks up on its own momentum and that's what we saw for example in Singapore um, uh, even before the lockdown and especially during the lockdown um, consumers started to accumulate product and they saw our product and they they got to t- test it and that gave us like a, a big lift so um, a strong portfolio domestically growing presence internationally and we are in categories that consumers easily international consumers easily understand um, the other thing is our innovative um, our innovation pipeline um, because of our base, we are able to invest in both um, ways by which we can do our business better and ways by which we can do you know, new business. So for example, investment in the coconut space, uh, which started off with coconut water, but has, has uh, diversified into other form, forms like coconut milk, desiccated coconut, cocoa um, uh, powder and all of that. So it, it's really growing. Um, we went into unmeat, uh, plant-based uh, meat. So uh, too early to call if if that's going to go anywhere. Uh, but that innovation, I think, or the ability to innovate uh, because of our base enables us to uh, make bets like that. And of course, what we've been able to do when we innovate, we, for example, in the dairy space, um, we d- we don't just innovate for innovation's sake. We follow through. Uh, go after market share, grow and build the business. And um, we have that track record of being able to um, build, I guess, a strong foundation uh, behind the innovations. Uh, Lastly, I guess it's culture. um, In terms of uh, 
we're really passionate about our mission of uh, nourishing and delighting everyone, every everywhere, every day, and that's what drives uh, what what drove our, our our business to where we are today. Mm-hmm. But even when the pandemic hit, parang it was beyond the job; it became a mission because we said, "Oh, sige, we say we have to." Nourish and delight everyone, every everywhere, every day. Pano yan, pandemic, and all the more we said, it's precisely because there's a pandemic we have to live up to that vision and mission. So, or for or, or that purpose. So, uh, we rolled up our sleeves and tried to figure out um, how we can do things and how we can do things better. So, amazing. And to everyone watching this, no, uh, what I like about what you said is. It's the Philippines selling to the world, eh? and for the longest time, it's the world always selling to the Philippines. It's nice to have something where you have something that's locally made, not just making an impact in the country, but building a brand abroad. So it's nice. It's nice that there are companies selling here, multinationals coming here, but it's also nice when you have a homegrown brand um, yeah. making an impact outside. And a lot of the multinational brands of tuna actually are made here by Gen by our Gen Sun plant in GPC. So Princess, uh, Chicken of the Sea, Agoromo in Japan, which have very exacting standards, uh, they trust the Philippines and they trust they trust Century Pacific uh, food to manufacture their brands uh, as tall manufacturers. So aside from selling our brands abroad. Uh, we do also uh, OEM for uh, other companies for the tuna sp- in the tuna category globally, uh, as well as in coconut water, for example, Vita Coco or uh, uh, Resaku, which is a, a coconut milk brand uh, in Malaysia, which is exported to other countries as well. So, gawa sa Pilipinas din yun. Amazing. I always end the interviews with something very, very encouraging and inspiring. And being someone that I'm sure a lot of people respect as an executive, uh, what advice would you give people who may have failed in their businesses or finances uh, last year and want to bounce back for 2021? I'm inspired by the story of our founder, uh, Ricardo Espo. You know, he, he... it wasn't all the time that he was, you know, like a successful uh, businessman in uh, food manufacturing. Um, he 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 was into um, another type type of business, uh, and it didn't really go well for him. Mm-hmm. And then he was like trying to figure out what to do, and he stumbled upon the idea of uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, particularly on the sardine space. He's actually on a food show. He saw the machine and the, the guy who was selling it was saying, if I bring this back to Taiwan, it will cost more. Why don't you just buy it? Uh, or I can like consign it to you, pay me when you can. Um, and so he saw the opportunity and then he was down on his, you know, down, down in, in, on his luck. But then he saw the opportunity, took hold of the opportunity and uh, really passionately worked and built uh, and started with uh, with that to make it to what it is today right? so um, so I guess the, the advice is that you know uh, crisis it, it will always hit and it will always happen it's what you do during a crisis and uh, how you respond to it uh, that will you know is the true measure of a man and uh, to his credit bagsak na siya uh, but then he was given an opportunity. Uh, maybe I should correct it. He was looking for opportunities. That's why he was in the food show. He found it, and then talaga he 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 continued to to think out of the box and innovate in terms of being able to serve the the needs of the consumer. So manufacturing tuna here as well as sardines here and exporting it um, to customers abroad and selling it to uh, the Filipino market. So I guess dagdagan uh, of course, the grace of God. Uh, I guess you have to always, you know, like invoke and uh, ask for God's grace to help you out uh, in all of your endeavors. For 2021, personally, would you be more cautious given the data that you have right now or would you be more aggressive approaching the year? Um, we're cautious in the sense that, um, 
you know, like we see that consumers are that we're going through a bit of a like a recession. So uh, we're holding, we're 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 working really aggressively and as hard as we can to try to avert uh, cost increases. But it's very hard because globally everything is uh, increasing. So we're finding ways by which we can continue to hold on to our prices to, for as long as we can, so that we don't have to burden the consumer any further. But um, we do see that there are needs uh, that continue to be unmet. Um, so, for example, uh, in the plant in the plant based meat uh, space. So, on the base business, we want to be continue to be affordable to our consumers, where who we understand they're going through a recession. Uh, but it shouldn't stop us from thinking both of the long term and maybe even the immediate term opportunities and aggressively pursuing that. So, I guess it's a ba- it's a mix of both. Uh, we will continue to run after the opportunities aggressively. Um, while cautiously managing the business, uh, the base business, uh, considering uh, market conditions uh, and the, the temperament, I guess, of uh, of the consumers. Got it. Thank you so much for your time, and to everyone watching this, I hope that this is something that gave you enough insight also to know more about the company so you can make the right decision on what are you supposed to do also with the capital that you have and before i let you go i i would normally do this to everyone who would guess here uh fast talk uh, okay. two options no right or wrong whatever comes up at the top of your head uh if you're ready uh, let's do this okay. okay jordan or lebron jordan steak or salmon salmon london new york New York. Winter or summer? Winter. Large, massive mansion or travel the world? Mansion. <laughs> uh, success or significance? Significant. Dollar, euro? Dollar. Dollar. Bitcoin, gold? Old-fashioned ako eh, gold. Condo or house? House. City or country? City. Cut loss or hold on and fight for the business? Fight. Lose multiple times but win? Uh, multiple times as well or win once and never lose at all uh, multiple Makati BGC Makati fitness or finance fitness money or love money <laughs> <laughs> <Got it. So laughs> thank you so much Greg Banso on CNPF and to everyone no, I'll put the link below for their investor relations if you guys have any other questions or things that you'd want to know about the company it's all there and that's what's nice about listed companies all of the details their plans their growth the fundamentals their income their debt it's all there but i hope that this gave you enough insight also to see uh from the heart of the company on where they're headed and how they're pivoting in this new normal so to everyone i hope this video helped you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon and god bless you all I'm looking forward to a bigger 2021 in terms of live commerce behavior. Because in 2020, we were all about introducing it. We were all about what is it for, how can it help you. But now people are already knowledgeable about it, so we're expecting more in terms of uh, the acceleration of behavior for consumption of viewership.